All right, guys. Welcome to TWC 19 OCE, and we have I am Avali on English in light blue up against Spitfire on Abbasid in orange, and we're here today on Basin. That looks out our plays. Both going to go for second scouts here. Should be pretty crucial. Regardless of which ship you're going for, just to try and get the sheep. Because I don't think this map has them particularly stacked up in any one place other than sort of around here in the center. So, Avli grabbing a nice handful there. Well, Spitfire scouting around the edges of the map. Doesn't seem to have found many so far. This map really isn't all that dense for sheep when I think most of the other new custom maps for tournaments have been, yeah, pretty intensive on the sheep actually. Frizzy and Marshes, for instance, is great for early sheep. It's a great map for civs like French and Rus to really power ahead that huge, safe, herdable eco. So Spitfire, let me collect his mid-map sheep. So Abbasid, go on for the berries, won't be so important for them. While the French, I mean sorry, while the English, at the start they go quite heavily on it, but they often will transition into a mill, even before aging up, getting anywhere from two to six farms, while they take wheelbarrow as well. Bearing in mind, the English have a great food wood army in age 2, whether it be playing bowman spear or bowman horseman or spear horseman or spitfire. Going to that house of wisdom, it's going to connect these buildings all up quite nicely. Another house should connect these up quite well. Start giving him some contributions towards his Golden Age bonuses. Abbasid Unique. Oh, it looks like these aren't quite close enough, perhaps. Oh no, they are. But yeah, he needs something to get these joined up. So, Avali starting with Council Hall. And because Abbasid, unlike, say, French or HRE, don't really have any access to any early, like, food gold units such as knights or man at arms in H2, uh, I think the English player will be pretty safe to field an army with his bowmen and then sort of play it by ear from there. So it'll be a rough one for Abbasid. But Spitfire gonna go for second town center if he can try and get this right in the center of this hunt, or even over on this one, and then work his way back. It you know, it really buys him a lot of control. And he can safely work on holding onto this gold mine as well. And really look at powering ahead on the eco over the English player. And bearing in mind the English Civ doesn't really have to worry about Expanding outside their base for food, pretty much from here onwards. Um, it's unlike how most people would even opt for going for the mill really early. Like I said, it's starting to add farms before they've even started aging. But even if they do hold off, again, farms just so much cheaper. Half price, man, that's busted. Man, the Abbas is so vocal. It's great. So, instant bowman spam here. English long bowman, unlike regular archers, actually deal a little bit of extra damage, a bit of extra range, but cost 90 resources instead of 80. So 
So Avalie actually focusing down the sheep there. How rude. Spitfire is stunned by this display. So Spitfire is going to have to play around his stables for now, but he's going to get fresh food stuff, so he's getting his uh, wheelbarrow tech, and he's stopped gathering stone for now to get the war. So he can't quite go the quick second town center that he wants to but I think now that he's sort of committed to the mining camp he might as well keep going behind this once he does use the stables to really prevent the English player from pressuring with a mixed army and even bringing a villa two forward to start towering up around his base because with English fighting under their network of castles buff it's very hard to fight their really solid h2 army because like I said, they've just got that stronger early game backline than any other Civ. <laughs> so Avalie going to get going on the mill now. And he's already able to start putting some pressure on with the bow. So that's sort of the beauty of opening without any early farms. Is that you can just get going straight away. And often... Just had this favorable position with your military. Well, right now, it's a good spear count here for Spitfire. So as long as he can focus... I mean, a good horseman count. So if he can focus down the bows and get out here, he comes out ahead. Abilie picked up a bill or two already. And like I said, he's got that infinite food eco. Spitfire is going to start having to expand around the map. Avalie is blocking him off from these hunts, so he's going to have to go for another set of berries, which not so bad on Abbasid and Delhi, because they do get that nice increased resource amount and gather rate. So by the looks of things, Spitfire. Start to stabilize here. So Abilie transitioning onto the farms now. And he's taking wheelbarrow behind this as well. But Spitfire, gonna find it hard to gather wood or stone with these bows. Even with the, the wall, they really need to have a tower right behind the wall. We'll just start really defending here. Spitfire. Now he's start adding some of his own archers. These guys are a little bit inferior, but a little bit more disposable. They are 10 food cheaper than the longbowmen. But food, not really a problem for English. And food is going to be a problem here for Spitfire's Abbasid. Should he crumble to this initial contain? But he's got a nice horse count, so he can actually start pressuring the English player. So, Avalie behind this is towering up, just to make sure he's not going to lose this. He's going to have the stone, I mean the gold, sorry, for age 3 behind this very quickly. He hasn't really gone for any eco upgrades at all, but again, he's sniping... Some more gathering for Spitfire. Spitfire attempting to try and raid this English opponent here. So Spitfire, 28 vills and 13 military. Avalie is 32 military and... I mean, 32 vills and 11 military. So already a bit of an eco bleed. But at the same time, Avalie's army is going to start to get outpaced. He is adding some spears to defend at home now. And he is able to get a very quick and safe King's Palace here, but not if Spitfire reveals, uh, figures out that it's going up, but he can't see it on the map so far. 
bit cheeky of Avali, but he might be able to get this up in time. Avali's army having to retreat. Well, this is a nice composition here for Spitfire. He needs to get his archers in range to start picking off some of these spears again. Avali really going to be able to reap the benefit of both age 3 and 2 TC at the same time. So, English age 2, extremely flexible with not only the fact that it's got such a strong initial comp, you can, yeah, go towards age 3 and really reap the benefit of 2 TC eco anyway. So now Spitfire. The pressure's on. He's got his second town center on the way. But now he is down an age relative to his opponent. So Avali in a nice spot here. So these archers of Spitfires a little bit of a look-see. But uh, Spears safe and sound at home. If they garrison that tower, they can really take a nice trade. So for now, Spitfire doesn't really seem to be producing anything. He's got 35 and 21 to 40 and 10. So bigger army here. But Avali, slightly bigger eco, and it's about to get bolstered by the fact that his opponent having to really invest in walls now to protect the second TC and all these hunts. Because now the English player has access to his knights and can get his man at arms up to age 3 stats. English, the only civ that can get them in age 1. But Avali, choosing to not field them to a castle, obviously, the downside of that, the civs. They get them in age 3, don't need to worry about getting the upgrades to get them to age 2, then age 3 starts. A bit like the knights for English. You know, quick castle age, you get the full strength knight versus, say, a French or a Rus knight, which starts out in its early stage. But the one knight, not going to be able to take a fight against all the horsemen, but saying that the horsemen are just ignoring it in favour of... Well, I was going to say the smaller army, but they're having to back off now because there's a good number of spears there. Quite a bit of melee that the horsemen can't contend with. They're great against the, bow the uh, longbowmen and the general archers, but really the main strength, I guess, is the fact that the raiding pressure that they get, the fact that they just force you to have to have some spears. Because spears will just destroy horsemen. It's not like a fight against knights where if the knights have better upgrades than the spears, the spears will lose. Horsemen just never win against spears. Ever. Ever. It's a big garrison being forced here. But at the same time, horsemen are quite expensive and Avali is having a con I mean, having a go at Spitfire's second town center now. The knights now being rallied off the spears to try and pressure the archers here. These villagers aren't really able to stick around and assist. Don't know why Spitfire's brought them forward, actually. Oh, is he trying to get on the mill over here? Well, oh, that's rough for him. Oh, Spitfire bringing these villas. It's Really quite tough for him because he's now going to drop a few of them. Well, back at home, Avali managed to fend off the horseman raid. So, because the initial town center and the tower combined, you can park 25 bills in there. Avali mostly safe through that, so 56 and 15 to 38 and 9, so. It's looking a little bit rough now because Spitfire no longer has his military advantage and that work account gap has really started to grow. So it's going to get a bit rough from here. He's getting his culture wing. So he's going to get castle age. Preservation of knowledge means 30% cheaper techs. He can just really start slamming every single eco tech and working on double armory. 
double blacksmith uh, unit upgrades. Avalys already started snatching up relics. Let's continue to add more production though. He's got some longbows still left here at home. Spitfire. These horsemen really just buying him some time at the moment, I think, because he just doesn't have a huge amount of army at the moment. And we got 12 eco pop. I mean, army pop, sorry. Happily using the small eco lead he's got to really just smash out a couple of extra production facilities. Spitfire's doing the same now as well, so we've got. Six production for Sills. The Spitfire. Oh, the Horseman. <laughs> just making it out of the area, convert in time. I mean, sorry, just able to kill the monk in time, but also running into the knights, so they can't stick around and camp that relic. And there's another monk out for our English player who's going to look at snatching up a relic and looking at grabbing that one again. Spitfire defensive keep just to guard these resources now and give him I guess the stone to go for a, a couple of aggressive ones he needs to be able to get there now and Avali continuing to apply good pressure Spitfire getting a lot of wood I wonder if he's gonna try and go for uh, a bunch of farms here and look at also fielding some of his camel units just to try and reduce the damage of these Knights the Knights able to hit over the Palisade wall there, make it quite tough to repair through this. He's going to have to get some crossbows, even possibly camp his archers there just for the extra damage. Or well, Avali cleaning up the bowmen, I mean cleaning up the horsemen now with his mix of, he's got longbows still and he's got man-at-arms and knights. And the beauty of playing around stables as... English, like transitioning to it once you get to castle, is that you sort of lock your opponent out of just being able to beeline Manganels, which we can see our Abbasid player looking at building now. So, Abbasid actually able to get siege uh, engineering to build any siege unit they like. Sorry, any uh, non cannon siege unit they want. I mean, normally Siege Engineering gives you access to Battering Rams and Siege Towers, but Abbasid actually have access to Battering Rams, you know, at the start of the game. So Siege Engineering gives everyone else Battering Rams. These Manganels, great area damage against all the infantry units, but... Like I said, our English player, a bit of forethought in playing around his knights has basically nullified this already. If Spitfire moves out from behind the walls, but it looks like he's going to have the Great Wall of Spitfire. Spending the whole length of one side of the map. He's starting to really chop through the edges here. Tower. I think it's going to be in range of the keep, so I don't know if this is going to work, but I do like that Avalee's starting to tower just on the perimeter of Spitfire's base now because it means that he's going to reap a nice defensive advantage on his opponent's doorstep. But the Manganel is going to prevent the towers from going up so quickly, at least, as well. Knights not able to really stick around because there are a good number of crossbows, but bearing in mind, longbows are a perfect counter to them with the extra range over regular archers even and over the long the crossbows to begin with. So these guys 
Don't have a huge amount of health or a lot of armor at all, so pretty susceptible to any sort of damage. So both horsemen and longbows trade really well against the crossbows. The spears are going to prevent knights from engaging here, but the mangonel ooh, is really the only thing that can stem the tide of these man-at-arms right now, I think. Looks like Abilie is going to make Spitfire really work for the defense here. He's cleaning up a lot of these villages at the moment. Looks like Abilie might be thinking of going for this next sacred site. He's already got three relics under his possession. And Spitfire, as much as he's tried getting a couple of damage upgrades here for his bows, he's really struggling to defend here. So Avali repelled for now, but he has control of the middle sacred site. Looks like Spitfire has made a bit of a gap here, incidentally. He does have that mangonel still parked there as well, I hope he's not forgotten about that. These spears should be able to do a little bit of damage against the knights. So they're fighting in even numbers. The knights aren't the ones closer to full health here. So this could be a good trade here for Spitfire, the first one he's had in a little while. So Spitfire able to clean up the knights and he's up to 64 and 34. But Avali is up to 94 and 40, so... Even with those knights going down for free, I think Abilie is still in the driver's seat here. So we've got two ranged damage upgrades here for Spitfire. And one ranged armor, but it's not really anything to deal with Abilie's military. Abilie has got quite a few upgrades. He's got two ranged armor upgrades. One merely armor and one range damage, one melee damage, so it's be quite tough here for Spitfire because he's down on upgrades as well, even a month here, <laughs> get a bit of healing off, but Avali can't really stick around without adding a little bit of cavalry to clean up the mangonels, or just thinning out enough of Spitfire's army that he can send units just to focus down them same time it's gonna be the main focus of Spitfire they can keep adding those for the minute because he can't really engage into this comp until he gets a much bigger army considering how many units how many infantry units that uh, Avalie's got so he can blow off blow the infantry off the map then Avalie might crumble here he's gonna lose a couple of villages trying to get this sacred held right now The mangonels are going to have to retreat, and so is the rest of the army to protect them because staggered man at arms will be able to get on them in no time. Crossbow is going to do well against the man at arms, though. But Spitfire's range ball should be able to pick off a lot of this back line. As long as he splits up his army quite well here, he might come out of this ahead because there's not really a front line as such. For Spitfire at the moment, and so these mangonels are going to fall. The crossbows can't really stay in range of the longbows, and I think it's too much here. Spitfire is really starting to fall behind, and Avali sealing the deal, taking Imperial Age, and he's going to look at mounting one last push, but Spitfire taps out. GG.